Okay, in this video I want to set up a new web customer. So I want to go into my hard drive where I have created uh, a folder for my new customers. Now the default folder for the IIS service is the INET pub directory. It's on the C drive and when I go into the INET pub you'll see the uh, default location for the default uh, website www.root and I've created another folder called websites. This is where I'm going to put my customers websites. So I want to go into websites and here are my customers that I've created. Right, but I didn't actually have to create these folders. What I'm going to do is go into the local users and groups and I'm going to create a new user. All right, and we're going to call it uh, Steve's. Uncheck that, check the password. All right, so that just creates a user account. All right, now I'm going to go into that user account's profile, go to the profile tab, and I want to set it up so this user logs into a home folder. I'll give them the H drive. <clears throat> and it's on the server Miller Web 1. It's in the Web Sites folder. And I'm going to use the system variable percent user name percent to automatically create a folder for this user. Right, click OK. And I go back to the Windows Explorer, and you'll see that it's created a new folder for Steve's Knives web shop. And I'll right click on that, go to properties, go to the security setting, and you'll see it automatically gave the user Steve and administrators group full control. What we need to do now is tell it to uh, receive the inheritable permissions from its parents. So I'm going to go to advanced. I want to change the permissions tab and now click on the include inheritable permissions from this object's parent. Click OK and OK. So now when I look at the permissions it's added these extra entries here. So there's Steve and administrators but now it's added everyone has read permission, the creator owner system and then this is the important one network service. You'll see why in a minute. Alright, so now it has a proper permission set up. Alright, so let's minimize that. Now let's go into our DNS service. And I'm going to go into my forward lookup zone. And now I want to create a new host record for this new web customer. And it has to, I'm going to give it the same name as its login and the same name as its folder name. So Steve's Knives. You'll notice as I entered it, it filled in the fully qualified domain name right here. So now I can add the IP address I want to assign to this, and it's going to be the same as all the others. All right, we'll add that. So you see all of these web customers are using the same IP address. And so when a packet arrives to this machine destined for this IP address, it's unpacked, and then it's sent up the OSI model to the IIS service, and then it's associated with a host record. So in this case, the uh, host record is Bill's Bait Shop. So it looks into its uh, record table here and says, oh, Bill's Bait Shop .miller Local. Yeah, we host that record. We host that website. And here's the information. It sends it back down. So now I want to create a new website for my new customer. I'm going to add a website. Give it the site name, Steve's Knives. We're going to change the application pool to the default one because we're not going to be running anything special on it right now. Uh, we're going to point to the physical path, the physical location on the hard drive. So we'll go to C drive, INET pub, 
websites and Steve's knives folder. That's where it's supposed to look for the default page when it comes in. We're going to click on connect as. We're going to leave it as a pass through authentication. That's what that network service is going to be looking for. We're going to use the HTTP protocol. We're going to use any unassigned address. All right, leave it unassigned. Leave the default port address the same. Now here's where we're going to put in our host name. It has to be identical to the forward lookup zone entry. So Steve's knives dot Miller dot local. All right, we'll start that up. There we go. <clears throat> All right, let's click on explore. So it took us to the uh, default folder for this website. Let's put a page in there just to give it something to look at. Create a text document. Call it default. And we're going to change the type of document to HTM. Yep, we really want to change it. Okay, so now it's a default web page. Let's open it up with Notepad and just give it some basic information. How about H1? Just double check what it looks like, and there we go. We've got a basic web page. All right, we'll minimize that. Now let's see if it'll browse. We're going to turn on the browse from the website now, and uh, we've got our website, Steve's Knives Miller Local, opens up in the host um, browser here, or the default browser. So, we needed to create a folder to hold all of our customers. All right, we put it in the default folder for the IIS service. All right, we created this websites folder. We gave this folder some additional security settings. Basically, it needed to have the network service, had to have read permissions. All right, and then we created a user account and then we pointed that user account to this uh, default home folder location. So that associated that user account with that folder which automatically set it up with the proper permissions. Right. Then we had to go in and allow the inheritable permissions to tunnel down to this object. All right, so we created a user account, we created a folder for our customer, we created a default document for our customer. Then we went into the DNS service to the forward lookup zone, we created a host record entry for this website. Then we went into IIS and created a new site and associated it with the default application pool and the physical location of its drive with the folder stored. And we gave it a host record entry so that any packet that comes in on port 80 for our IP address of this machine when it gets opened up and handed up to the IIS service it's going to look for the Steve's Knives .miller .local site and then it'll know where to look for the default page. Now if you're used to using index.htm instead of default.htm you can use that because the default document allows for several different possible naming conventions. So default HTM is what I used. You can use index.html several different options.